Bring on Pepperdine first for the women and then Portland for the men. It is game day on a Friday. BYU's teams, both five seeds, and we feel like, for the most part, in favorable matchups. But, Jerem, which team has the better matchup today? Is it the BYU women who play at 1 p.m. Mountain Time for Eastern, or is it the BYU men who get underway at 8 Eastern tonight, 5 Pacific? I think it's the women versus Pepperdine. Uh, Pepperdine playing uh, without its uh, leading scorer, Nally Stedman, who had 21 in the Pepperdine win in Provo. And then, um, you know, it's, it's Kristen Dowling's not there, their head coach. They had a nice game yesterday, down 14 with like a buck 40 left in the third. Great comeback. They didn't lead until the last, you know, part of the game. Portland's coming in hot. And as you mentioned, no Moses Wood, no Tyler Robertson, their top two players. In the one matchup they had, BYU didn't play them twice. That's the Gonzaga rule. There are two teams. They wanted two extra non-conference games a couple years ago. BYU only played Portland once at home. Those two guys weren't there. BYU won convincingly, but it, that team's very different. Last night, they might have played the best game of the season. I mean, they set a West Coast Conference tournament record, 19 threes. They had nine at halftime, and Tyler and I, uh, Tyler's super smart. I am not, but we were like, I, I brought it up. This isn't sustainable. Oh, it was. Uh, they made 10 in the second yeah, half. more so. Now, I don't think it's sustainable going into tonight. Sure, could they make 10 or 12, whatever? Yes. They're going to make 19 again. There's there's no way. No, watch. They go for 20 or something. <laughs> but Portland's coming in super hot, confident. They've won a game. They've probably checked a certain box in their mind of, like, on Portland Sports Nation. They're probably talking about what – oh, they don't have it. What uh, What is our goal here? What do we need to do? Hey, let's win a game and then just see where we're at against yeah. BYU. BYU feels like, okay, we can take Portland, but they, they're coming in hot, and they have those two players. The scout is different than that first matchup, Spence. I think it's the women against Pepperdine who are shorthanded, maybe used all the gas in the tank to come back and win. And the, and the women, I, I think, are probably a little ticked off. Sub-500 record in non-conference, uh, uh, non 500 record in the league. Lauren Gustin feels like she should have been player of the year. Chip on the shoulder, worst opponent. Portland coming in hot. I think it's the women. It is the women. And the loss at home to Pepperdine when BYU was up by nine with under two minutes to play and somehow the Waves got that game into overtime and then beat the BYU women, that has sat for a long time in the collective minds of Amber Whiting and her team. And it was kind of the beginning of this downward trend for BYU to close out the season. Like that game was a negative turning point. And... Amber talked to us yesterday, and she's not shy about using different things to, like, motivate her team. I guarantee that game has been discussed again and again and again. Once that matchup became finalized yep. yesterday, it's like, hey, remember what they did in Provo? And BYU's on a losing streak. Jerem, like, a lengthy losing streak. They've had to sit on that basically all week or since, yep. since Monday, losing to Portland. Yep. So it's been... Yeah, a better part of the week. Yep. What are you thinking about that? The hunger is there. I expect BYU to come out just ramped up and ready to play. And it is so tough. When you expend that much energy to come back in a game that Pepperdine played yesterday, what do you have left in the tank? I wonder. I wonder. And you're playing without your best player. Allie Stedden's out for the waist. Yeah. The better matchup is for the BYU women because yep. they're angry. <laughs> They've been thinking about this. For a long time, not Pepperdine specifically, but just how the regular season ended, they want to get that bad taste out of their mouths. And hopefully the uh, Listerine today is a victory against Pepperdine, right? And yep. I, yeah, I just feel like BYU is going to show up, and they're going to play hard, and they're going to start quick. And, and they might boat race Pepperdine. So don't be surprised to see BYU run away with this thing. Very well can see that. And Nani Falate is uh, obviously a huge key. If she doesn't turn it over a ton, BYU is pretty good. Uh, first team all-conference player. Last year, she was a role player, and she's really emerged as a star. The, an the angry mention um, <laughs> you just said reminded me of that Chris Farley skit on SNL where he's tasting, you know, uh, coffee. Like, did, <laughs> uh, Sir, did you know these are decaffeinated Colombian caffeinated crystals? He thought they were something else, and he's like, what? And, <laughs> and he just goes ballistic, and then they do an interview with him, and he's all bandaged up, and they're like, sir, how do you feel? And he's like, angry that's Lauren Gustin <laughs> yes. and BYU yes. after that loss where they shouldn't have lost to Pepperdine at home the WCC awards they felt like Lauren hey well Lauren's the best player how do you not you know you double up everybody in the league in rebounds and and you're also fifth in scoring how are you not the best player yeah I, I expect BYU to come out fired up 
The men, they got some work to do, right? And Portland certainly uh, poses a threat. We'll talk to Tyler more about what he thinks of the matchup. They don't have a big who posts up at all. Like Sho Christian Showland, who greatest Showland showed up in Portland or uh, in Provo, he was amazing. He's going to drag Foose out, but Foose will drag him in uh, to the paint. So Foose has got to have a big night. Yeah, how does Portland defend Fusini Traore in the post? I, I think that's a huge concern. And how does BYU defend five out that can shoot threes? And I do like BYU's defensive metrics. Like, we were driving away from the arena last night and having that conversation with Tyler. And, and again, we'll talk to him more about this in a moment. But we all kind of collectively feel like BYU defends the three-point line much better than San Diego yes. does. San Diego's, San Diego's not a good defensive team. They're not a good team in general. They're not a good team in general. They were in the 8-9 game. Steve Lavin's trying to build that program still. Yeah, I, I'm feeling good about BYU tonight. BYU, sh <laughs> there will be an emphasis on getting out to shooters. Make them make the twos. Line, for they only, sure. They were, what, uh, like 0-5 from two f for like 18 minutes yesterday in the game. It was, it was weird. I mean, their first crazy. nine field goals in the game were all three-pointers. They didn't have a two-point field goal. It's like pickup out there, but they're making them. Until three minutes left in yeah. the first half. Yeah. So, yeah, BYU is going to defend. We believe they will defend with great urgency. Great vigor. Against the three-point line. They're not angry, Chris Farley angry per se. Like the women's basketball team is. If you haven't seen that, you got to go back and watch it. It's so funny. <laughs> but, yeah, I think the six-and-a-half-point line is yeah. totally fair yeah. between the Pilots yeah. and Cougars. Topic two. Are you more excited this weekend for the West Coast Conference Tournament? Cougars at the NFL Combine. Uh, you know, Jaron Hall and Puka Nakua talking to the media. They're going to they're gonna run. They're going to do everything. Blake Freeland. Or spring football practice begins Monday, by the way. I saw a couple of posts this morning. One from Josh Hewitt who said, we're ready, and it's all the helmets oh, in yeah. the training room. Looks great. And I'm like, yeah. Big 12 stickers on there? Let, let's go. Like, So that's exciting. And then I saw our boy Cam Miller, who follows college football players, especially as they enter the NFL draft. He just tweeted out a photo of Jaron Hall's nameplate from the NFL Combine, and I was like, oh, yeah. I'm emotionally <laughs> invested. Let's go. But it's all about but. access. We are here. We have access to actual games. Actual games will always win this conversation for me. Even if it is football versus basketball, I will take an actual basketball game, especially in March, at a tournament over practice and a combine scenario. Football's king when it's in season. It's not in season right now. Basketball Wait, but is. Spring football season is the number no, two no, sport of BYU. No, no. Not when it compares <laughs> to March basketball. <laughs> yes. March basketball is another level. I'm kidding. Tyler Haas is walking away offended. My bad. <laughs> you, play, you play for the right to get to March and do something it's special not the here. quote. Okay, well, what's the quote? The play. You play, you play to, to win. win the game. You play to get to March. And, yeah, no, it's March. You're it's right. It's so exciting. March uh, basketball, yeah, it, it's, it's for great. me, is right there on the excitement level of just football in general. Well, general March basketball. Because we've not walked out of this gym seeing BYU win this competition. Can they do it in this final year? We've seen the women do it, what, four times or something in yes. the 12 years? Shout out to Jeff Judkins shout for out, that. Shout out to Judd uh, and all the winners. Um, this has not ended well uh, since 01 in this town, right? And we hear the Rebels against UNLV and the whole deal. We've been there and shoes are flying in the stand, whatever, right? Whether that story is true or not. They... Hopefully, BYU can muster something here. Yes. My answer yes. to this is yes, WCC tournament. Okay. We're here. We're super invested. We're calling the game, for goodness sake. Yeah, absolutely. Come on. But guess what? The combine's going to be cool. Hopefully, these guys do well. And while it is uh, BYU, it is three dudes, right, as opposed to, like, a whole team. Sure. And spring football Monday is going to be cool. Like, that'll be fun. But guess what? Hopefully, we're talking about BYU versus St. Mary's on Monday. And we're talking about uh, BYU women against Gonzaga on Monday. That is our just get this get the semifinal Monday, please. That is our hope and our prayer, right? That Monday we were talking about that, and then later next week, yeah. let's talk about spring football. All right, uh, our question of the day is this: Are you more excited this weekend for West Coast Conference tournament basketball, Cougars at the NFL Combine, or spring football practice beginning on Monday? Is it would it be bad if I brought up men's volleyball, taking on number two GCU? <laughs> If Baseball they, against hey, Omaha. All of it. If you want to throw in one of those State. answers, feel free to do so. There's a lot going on. Uh, you know, women's volleyball is going to play some exhibition games this week. There's a lot going on. Is this the busiest week of the year in Cougar sports? 
It, Crazy. It, it might be. There, there is a lot happening. And uh, I'm going to be dead honest with you. Wait, uh, what were you before? My Internet just went completely out, and so I have no access to the Twitter feed that is being supposedly put in by our producer <laughs> friends in Provo. In Provo, they're like, why can't you see it? <laughs> yeah, I don't see it either, so it's all good. Okay. So uh, we'll come back with some we'll, of those we'll, tweets we'll get some. and answers to the we'll question of the day. Uh, at Ty Haas 3 says, you guys are tools. <laughs> uh, 